Okay, so last section it was um, everything was a slice and you had to find some cross-sectional area and then integrate that cross-sectional area formula. <coughs> this is a, a, a different take on volume, also re revolving, but a different take on it. If I change and have a, a function that is, um, for example, uh, impossible to solve the volume by disk or washer, there's another method out there. It's not that it's always going to be possible to do it this method, but, but um, here's an example. All right, this is a strange function. I don't expect you to know what this function looks like. Um, it's, it's the sine of x squared. I would draw it for you. If I was to revolve this about the y-axis, you would think uh, you should be able to do washer. There's a discernible gap between your region and your axis. You should try washer. Okay. But here's the issue with that. There's an outer radius that goes from your axis through your region. There's an inner radius that goes from your axis just up to your region. <coughs> the problem is that for both of these, it's the function. There's two problems, really. That issue that, yeah, both of them is that x distance, which represents the function. And, and, the, and, the, and the second problem is that you have to solve that for, for y. This thing is going to be in terms of y. You're going to have this, this, this region that's a washer. You're going to have this region that's a washer, and then you're going to move it upwards. And so it's going to be in terms of y. You have to solve for x which requires the arc sign to start off and then a square root. That's not something you want to have in your integrand. Arc sign alone is not something you want to have in your integrand, let alone a square root of it. When your formula is too complicated to integrate, you want to switch to another method. When your formula involves your, your radius, capital R is the same as your radius lowercase r. It's the distance to the function. So this is, this is trouble twice. This is double the problem. And so you can't do it with the washer. So let me describe this other technique. If you don't understand anything that goes on the next two slides, that's OK. It's me, once again, trying to motivate the method. And so um, here's how it works. Questions about that? OK, here's how it works. We'll be using shells. Instead of slicing, we'll have shells. What these guys are will be nested cylinders. Very straight. Okay. So here's one. Sh here's a cylinder. Okay. With with the, with a hole bored out. It's like a like a donut cylinder kind of thing. And we're going to be adding up the volume of a bunch of cylinders. Here's just one of them. It's a shell though, not a, not a full cylinder. It's a shell. Um, the volume of a cylinder has the, the height and the radius. Okay, There's an inner radius and an outer radius. Please, if you don't understand this formula at all, that's quite all right. The next slide is going to be just as worse. And then eventually, I'll, I'll show you a way to set it up. All right, I'll just tell you the truth. I'll just tell you the truth. It's, it's going to be bad. But if, you, if you're able to follow, that's great. Okay, it's going to be my job to try to find the thick region that's a shell with the one part being bored out. Basically, it's, it's, an, it's an outer volume minus an inner volume, just like with our, with our washer. Okay. We have the volume of the inner cylinder subtracted out from the volume of the, the outer cylinder, pi r squared, pi r squared with different r's. Okay, fine. Makes sense, all right. So, from here it goes, it get, basically the person that first thought of this, they get real clever basically. So they just come up with some kind of way to, to make it look all better. In the end it's going to look, it's going to look nice. And so um, here's how that works. You factor out the pi and the h that they both have in common. And then you have um, the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. 
That's going to be the volume of that shell. This is a difference of squares, like a squared minus b squared. It's like a plus b and a minus b. OK. The way they're going to handle this guy here is super clever. They're going to divide by 2 and multiply by 2 at the same time, not changing it. Because if you take this guy and divide by 2, it looks like a formula for average, right? The, the 1 plus the other divided by 2 is the average. And so they're going to multiply by 2 to balance this dividing by 2. So that they can call this the average radius. In our picture, it's going to be some distance, this green distance, which is the, it's right in the middle between the two. And so I'm going to call that average. That's what's going to replace this guy right here, an average radius. <coughs> How about this? The difference between the outer and the inner? Okay, we're going to call that the the, the, the change in radius. If I, if I get infinitesimally small, that's going to be very small. And, and so, so here's the formula. 2 pi h, an average radius, and delta r. But, but uh, that average radius here, you can just uh, rearrange this. Um, and, and 2 pi r is a circumference. And then the h and then this delta r. So what you're saying is that we understand that last line good. No, not even this last line. Uh, next slide. Okay, You're looking for an integration symbol. Okay. Wait for that. It'll be in a box, I think. Okay. This is motivation. What? Okay. 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 No. What are we going to do next? This is one shell. We have multiple shells. And we're going to add them all up. The volume of all those added up will be the total volume. And so we're going to set it up where this is one, and we threw, it, we threw a summation sign, and then that summation sign turned into an integral when we let the subdivisions go to be uh, very small. Okay. Okay. So it has this kind of butt cake shape. As you roll and revolve that, it looks like that. And we're going to do these shells. Here's one shell. There's going to be there's going to be infinitely many shells. Here's one of them. And we know how to find the volume of that shell. Okay. From the, from the formula from the other slide, the volume of the shell is found by this. Take the circumference, take the height, and take the thickness, and multiply those three things together. So, the circumference, well, there's going to be some radius. Okay. There's going to be some radius here in the middle. And so, um, That's going to be that average radius that we had on the last slide. So 2 pi times that will be the circumference. Um, H is the height. Well, how tall is this cylinder? The cylinder is as tall as the function is. So the function f of, f of that xi bar is the height. Delta, delta r is the change in thickness. It's going to be the difference between these two guys. <coughs> we'll call it delta x. This is one volume. I'm going to have another and another. They're nested. Russian Dow, they're nested. The one in the middle is totally inside of the next one and the next one. And so the point is that this is one volume. I'm going to add up a bunch of these. OK. But. Um, as I let the thickness go to zero, as I let delta x go to zero, though, then I'll be adding up infinitely many of these things. So my summation will become an integration. OK? 
Okay, I get a better and better approximation as the number of shells um, goes to infinity. And so the summation sign will then, this, now it's a Riemann sum, and here's the integration. Okay, so 2 pi is just some constant. X is the radius, and f of x is the height. And this is the formula for the volume using shells in this particular setup. There's other setups, so I I'm not going to derive every setup. Um, I derived this one for you, but, but um, I'm going to tell you how to do it in general on the next slide. So, so this is one setup when you're revolving about the y-axis. If this is, this is revolving about the y-axis, and you're talking about the area underneath some function and above the x-axis, then that's your setup. So the it's the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region under the f of x function above the x-axis from some x equals a to some x equals b, and you're using the, the axis of rotation as the y-axis. Okay, I changed the axis. It's a different setup. So on the next slide, we'll figure out, okay, that's nice for that one. But I need to know how to do it for anyone. We're going to do weird things with this axis. We're going to move it. We're going to make the x-axis. We're going to make it someplace removed away from one of these axes. So then how do you set it up then? It won't always be 2 pi x f of x. Okay. All right, so how do you, how do you set it up in general? In the formula, there is a radius and a height. And so what you're going to do is uh, you're going to have your region, not the other one, you don't have to have the whole 3D picture. You're going to have your region that's going to be the thing that's revolved around some axis. Um, for your region, you need to draw a, a rectangle, a typical rectangle. And this rectangle that you're going to use needs to be parallel to your axis of rotation. So somewhere in there, draw a rectangle and do the following. Connect your rectangle to your axis, that's your radius. And then you have to figure out how tall that rectangle is. It's not always going to be the function value, but here it is. And so all you need to do is, is figure out what the radius is and what the height is in general. The radius is the distance from the rectangle to the axis, that green distance. The height is how tall that rectangle is. The dx part is just the variable that you're integrating in. It was an x when you were using the y-axis. Any vertical line, you're going to be in terms of x. Any horizontal line, you're going to be in terms of y. And so when you're doing shell, it's your job to figure out just these two things. You get your region. You draw, you draw a typical rectangle. And you need to figure out the distance from the axis to that rectangle and how tall that rectangle is. That's all you need to figure out. And you plug them into this formula. What's different from washer and shell? See, so if we were doing washer or shell, then um, for washer, say, for washer, say if we're doing about this kind of an axis, when we had our washers, they were always perpendicular to the axis. Here's my axis, say, and my washers would look like this, sorry, and, and they're always perpendicular. I move this thing up. So, so with washer or disc, everything is, is, is perpendicular to the axis. Okay, that's for washer or disc. But for shell, it's parallel to the axis. That shell that we drew, that shell that we that rectangle that made that shell, it was parallel to the axis. Okay, that's how you're gonna help distinguish between I definitely changed the code. That's how you're gonna distinguish between the methods by your setup. Okay. Parallel. to the axis. Um, I guess I could have drawn a typical rectangle here, but we, didn't, we don't really use it like that. But yes, there is a typical rectangle here, too.
it's perpendicular to the axis. All right, that's what this bottom part says, basically. When you're doing disc or washer versus shells, your typical rectangle that you draw, although we didn't really draw it for a disc or washer, the typical rectangle that you draw is perpendicular to the axis. And for shells, the typical rectangle that you draw is parallel to the axis. And they'll be in different variables. <laughs> These are both drawn with the y-axis. Disc or washer would have the variable in terms of y. But shells has the variables in terms of x. If you flip that and use something like the x-axis, disc and washer will be in y and x, and, and, and um, shell will be in y. They'll flip. So you need to know not only which method you're going to choose, but which variable you're going to be in. Sometimes the variable you're going to be in is going to help you figure out which method to use, like which one is better to do. And so just know that they'll be in different variables depending on what kind of axis you'll have. We said last night that when you're doing disc or washer and you have a vertical axis, it's going to be in Y. But if you have a horizontal axis, it's going to be in X. That's what we said last class on, on, on Monday. And so for shells, it's the opposite. If you have a vertical axis, it's going to be in X. But if you have a horizontal axis, it's going to be in Y. When you're in Y, you have to solve everything for X. But when you're in X, you just kind of use the formulas that are given to you. All right. So we're going to do some by washer. Uh, we're going to do some by shell. And then... I'm going to do something where I throw it all in together and you have to figure out the method. That's what's going to happen on the exam. You all know disc, washer, shell. And so I'm going to do some stuff to help you decide which one to use. Okay, one example in a brick. This example here that we set up before. Any question about that last slide? I'm sorry. Any questions about this? I went through that kind of fast. I didn't give you guys a chance to ask questions. Yes? Where does the um, rectangles for the disc washer go? Uh, yeah, sorry, did I erase that? I shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, the rectangle for disc and washer, um, let's see here. I'll give you an example. This guy that we were doing here, and uh, let's say we use the uh, say we use the x-axis to rotate about. There we go. Say we use the x-axis to rotate about. Where does the rectangle for disc? I never really used a rectangle for disc and washer. So why are all of a sudden we're talking about rectangles? It's a very good question. So here is what a typical rectangle. We could have done it. It's just what I drew for the radius, basically. This part here is what a typical rectangle would be. And that rectangle gets rotated. And that's how you get your, your disc or your washer. When there's a hole, it's going to be this whole part. And then, so your typical rectangle is just uh, something that you draw. When you're doing disc and washer, you just draw it so it's perpendicular to your axis. And... Um, it's, it's going to determine whether you have disc or washer. I never really used it. It's okay if you don't use it. I just want you to um, know that for, for shells, it's totally necessary, though, to have it. To have a rectangle drawn in because that rectangle will dictate to you exactly what the radius is and what the height is. So, with the picture you just drew, yeah. the rectangle just makes a dick, right? With the picture I just drew, the rectangle makes if, if this is my axis the, oh, oh, yeah I'm gonna have this hole here oh, okay, so, it's making a washer. so it's gonna make a washer very good but if I if I rotate about the the line y equals one yeah, that's what then I got a disc yeah good question collection anything else we'll see I mean we'll throw it all together it'll get better like that's kind of bad at first but yeah it'll get better I promise <laughs> All right, so we're going to fast. Oh, here we go. So, 
just kidding. Netflix isn't working, so she's she's out of control. <laughs> and I got an iPad. And my son is logged on to Netflix in the office to two different machines. So anyway, I gotta call him and tell him to log off the iPad. <laughs> you want my, you want my ID? Yeah, yeah. Can I give it to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll log out, I promise. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch my shows later, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could do four. <laughs> So here we go, this problem, sine of x squared between 0 and root pi, and we're going to try it with um, rotating about the y-axis, and we recognize that we have to do shell. So we draw, a rec we draw a rectangle that is parallel to the axis of rotation. There's two things we need, a radius and a height. The way we get the radius is by connecting the axis to the rectangle. The way we get the height is how tall the rectangle is. So this one fits the formula that we derived. This one fits the formula. The radius is x. As I move this guy from my starting point of 0 to my ending point of, of root x, the distance off of the y-axis is x. So that's going to be your radius. How tall is that rectangle? The distance up to the function. Sine of x squared. What's the formula? 2 pi times the radius times the height. From some a to b. The a is where you start at. The b is where you end at. For us, a is going to be 0. b is going to be root pi. And it's up to us to be able to integrate x times the sine of x squared. Pull the 2 pi out. How do you integrate x times the sine of x squared? Do something. Let you be what? X squared. Okay. If I let u equal x squared, then du is 2x dx. So I'll be talking about the sine of u. You know what? Let me go ahead and take this 2. I have a 2, and there's my x, and there's my dx. It's okay if I just replace all of that with du, and I just don't forget that I got this pi out here. That's okay. Before, I would just divide by 2, and that's what my x dx will be replaced by. But since there's a 2 out there, let's use it. We actually have 2x dx. So we replace 2x dx with just this simple du symbol. Sine of x squared gets replaced with sine of u. And it's got the extra pi out there. I'm not going to integrate this from 0 to root pi. When I do u substitution, what I do is I leave it as an indefinite. I get the antiderivative, and then I plug back in my x's. You don't have to do that. If you do a change of limits, then, then do that. Okay. What's the antiderivative of sine of u? What function has sine of u as its derivative? Negative cosine. Negative cosine. Yeah. So we have this, this pi, and then negative 1 times the cosine of u. All right, great. All of this I consider like side work. 
My job was to figure out the antiderivative of this guy, and this is supposed to help me. The antiderivative of this guy is negative pi times the cosine of x squared. And now I just plug in my limits of integration. In fact, uh, I'm sorry, let me leave the negative pi outside. That, that's not smart. And that's all there is to it. See how this 103, the very end of 103 comes into play, the very end of AB calculus. If it's been a while for you, you want to make sure you review at least integration. We expect you to know just use substitution and find the antiderivative. There'll be other techniques that we'll learn along the way. You don't have to know them right now. It should be that when it comes down to the integration, it should be at least use substitution or just uh, something simple that you can find the antiderivative of. Nothing complicated like integration by parts or tricks or other things that, that we're yet to learn. We'll, we'll learn that stuff, and those stuff will get, be mixed into these kinds of problems. But for right now, though, there should be something um, not as complicated to do the integral. You put in a root pi and you square it. So what's the cosine of pi? What's the cosine of pi? Negative. Negative one. What's the cosine of zero? One. Okay. You don't have to memorize those things. It's good that that you have it memorized. But um, just use a unit circle. Okay. In a unit circle, the x and y coordinates tell you the cosine and the sine. And so the cosine of pi is negative one. The x is the cosine of that angle, and the 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 y is the sine of that angle. And so uh, the cosine of 0 is 1, and the cosine of pi is negative 1. All right, great. They don't cancel. It ends up as a negative 2 times this negative pi. Final answer is 2 pi. Questions about that? The end part of it, the integration part. Questions about the setup? Yes? The radius is this distance off the y axis. And, it, and it's going to change. As I move it further away, it'll still be that, though. The distance off the y axis, and that is x. Just like the distance off the x axis is y. The distance off the y-axis is x. Good question. Yes? It'll always be x. Ooh, careful with the word always. I move it to some other vertical line, it won't be x. It'll be x plus something okay. or x minus something. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by, by moving? My axis is the, is the y-axis right now. What if my axis was something different? If I move my axis to be something different, it won't always be x. OK? Yes, more questions. Um, you know how to do shell method for this one, because why? That, that argument on the first slide, you can't do washer yeah. for two reasons. It was double trouble. It was, it was, I have to solve this in terms of y. If this was washer, it'd be in terms of y. And that means I have to have arc sine of the square root, or the square root of an arc sine in my integral, or um, the, the outer radius is the same as the inner radius. It's the function value. So not going to work for washer. It won't always be the case when washer doesn't work, shell will. It won't always be the case that shell will always work. Okay. When you have a choice, I don't want you to always think, ah, I should choose shell. Don't, don't, it, it won't always be that way. Okay. But um, we're going to have a couple more examples. Let's take a break until 7.30, and then we'll, um, we'll come back with a couple more washer, I mean, uh, shell examples. Okay, this one we're just going to take to set up. We're not going to evaluate it. Another function that I wouldn't expect you to know how to graph, cosine squared. You can figure it out, though, but I, it's okay. For certain things, you shouldn't. It's not on your list of things you should. You should know how to graph cosine and sine, but not like sine of x squared like we had last time, and not cosine squared like we have this time. So, um, 
So, so I'll I'll give you the graph of what the uh, y equals cosine of of uh, of x quantity squared looks like. Okay, and and then the wording of this problem is is vague, so I have to add this parenthetical comment to to make it more clear. See, this function I only have one part of it. You know, it goes on forever, periodic. You know, and so this is just one part of it, and so I'd like to know the region between the curve, the line, y equals one fourth. I like to be that region, but then if I if I extend this out, there's all there's, there's infinitely many of these guys. So it needs to be precise and say basically, um, you know, the first one, the one that encompasses the the y-axis, the one from minus a to a, and not the other ones. I'm taking this particular one and rotating it about the line x equals pi over 2. I'd give you a drawing. Um, I at least would draw the cosine squared for you. And I expect you to be able to know y equals a fourth. Just draw something that, you know, just, you know, you know it goes up to 1. And so somewhere, draw y equals a fourth. And I expect you to know that x equals pi over 2 would be where this guy is 0 at. Okay. That's our axis. We're going to rotate about that. So for, for starters, we would think to try washer, but, um, but it wouldn't work out if we tried washer for that same reason. Um, the radius would be um, the function value. The outer and the inner radius would be the function value. So, so washer is not going to work. Um, so you draw your typical rectangle. And you draw a line that connects your typical rectangle to the axis. If you're going to do shell, these two are necessary. When you draw the rectangle, just make sure it's parallel to the axis of rotation. What do we need to find? How long the line is and how tall the rectangle is. This time it's not going to be just as easy as an X. Okay. The distance off the x axis, the distance off the y axis, we had said was x, no doubt about it. Here is the y axis though. This distance off the y axis is x. What do we do with that? That has to be subtracted from something. Because here's the entire distance. And from that, I need to take away x in order to get this distance. As soon as you start moving the axis to be something other than the x or y axis, there's either this addition or subtraction that we saw in our first um, part of today's lecture when we were setting up those different problems. We had these lines that were removed away from the x or y axis. Just know there's going to be some kind of add or subtract. Okay. Figure the longer distance and figure out the distance that gets subtracted from that. In this case, the distance that gets subtracted from that is exactly x. It's, it's the distance off the y-axis. What's the longer distance? It's going to be exactly this, this pi over 2 distance. And so if I'm to figure out my radius, I say it is pi over 2 take away x. Questions about that? Yes? How did you determine that that was where pi over 2 is, or did you just arbitrarily say, mm. well, we're I, rotating the boundary is at pi over 2, I'm just going to say it's here. The cosine <laughs> of pi over 2 then gets squared. I need, I need to know, you know, that this line here is where the function is zero at. I don't. You won't have to know the the green uh, the, the the blue graph. You won't have to know the blue graph. I would give you that, but it would be up to you to determine this this um that this axis actually ends up here by knowing that the cosine of pi over two is zero, and then just drawing in the the, the quarter y equals one quarter line. Um, yeah, good question. You're doing shell, you need radius and you need height. How tall is that rectangle? It's not just the distance up to the function like last time. What is it? 
interpret it? Uh, is it the function minus one fourth? Exactly. That is the distance up to the function minus take away something. Take away this constant one fourth. Very good. One before the break, one after the break. Those people like to cut out. Okay? No, we're not going to solve it. We're just going to set it up. Now, here's, the, here's, the, here's a, one more question. The last question is, what are the bounds going to be? We have the setup, 2 pi times the integral of this guy times that guy. But we need the limits of integration. We need the bounds. How are we going to figure those out? The bounds are about the region. Focus on the region, not the axis. The region. Yeah, what's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Find where uh, cosine squared x and 1 fourth intersect. All right, so where these two guys intersect. Cosine squared x and 1 fourth. We have to solve a little trig equation. Start by taking a square root. <coughs> Very good. You know, that square, it's so bad having it there. I don't know why mathematicians do that. It's so terrible. Why don't they just do this? Cosine of x whole thing squared. It'd be more obvious. It's like they want to be complicated or something. Because then we see, oh yes, we take a square root. Okay, so we take a square root, great. And that tells us then that the cosine x is plus or minus a half. Plus or minus. I think my animation has something happening in that spot. Oh no, uh, uh, plus or minus. Um, in this case, um, here I just have the plus. But uh, yeah, plus or minus a half. And then, um, where's that happen at? You have to go to unit circle. Uh, you have to go to unit circle, right? And you have to look for where the x value is a half. That's up here at pi over 3. Okay, and then, um, you know, this is plus or minus, and so um, at minus pi over 3. So, so um, there's this guy here that would give us the minus half. Um, there's this guy down here that would give us a half. Okay, and there's this guy in here that would give us the minus half. They're all good, but think about the, the setup here. Here's the y-axis. There's, there's this guy here and this guy here. We found out this guy was pi over 3. We can't call this guy uh, 5 pi over 3. We can't call it that. Because that's further down the line here. We need the neck, this is the y axis. We need the negative version of that. And that's how we end up with negative pi over 3. Yes, yes, this is also a solution to it. Remember how I said these guys continue to intersect? There'll be these other solutions as I go on forever and on that way. And so, um, yes, there is plus or minus, but it ends up being that my solutions that I need are just the plus guys here at. Um, at pi over 3 and at minus pi over 3, I have to call it. I can't call it, I'm all, although the name of it is also 5 pi over 3, that's further down the line here, and I, I don't have that. Okay, so I have my limits of integration now, and there's my setup. I just have to plug into this formula, and, and I'm not going to integrate it. This is just setting it up. And, and you'll see in some of those old final exam questions, they even have you stopping at the setup. This one's mostly because we can't integrate further. Once we do this, we'll end up with something that has uh, an x times a cosine squared, and we haven't learned integration by parts yet. Ask the question. Ask me. Oh, um, I'm confused about like the, um, the x that's like connected. All 
Alright, let me erase my, all my chicken scratch. Okay, so there's this radius that we have to find. Whatever is detached away from the x or y axis, there's going to be some annular subtracting that has to happen. Okay, it's not just a, a simple x or a y, it's some subtracting that has to happen. This distance here is pi over 2. That's how long that is. That's too much. We take away something from that. What we take away is how far that thing is from the y-axis. We take away x. That's how we get our radius. Okay. Um, the pi over 3 is just this place right here. Pi over 3 and, and, and minus pi over 3. That's just these guys here. Does that help? Okay. More questions? Sometimes I add things in. Sometimes I, I, um, I take and add things in to uh, what was originally there. And I think that this might not be on the uh, skeleton slides, this question here. I think it's taken from an old final exam or something like that. All right, you ready? Find the volume of the solid obtained by revolving the region. Now, some strange curve. You wouldn't have to know what it looks like. Sine x over x above the x-axis. And we're looking at between pi over 2 and pi. On the final exam that this is taken from, the picture was given to you. And you're to revolve this about the y-axis. The first thing you do is you draw a rectangle that's parallel to that axis. Very first thing. So, here's one for you. The very next thing you do is you draw a line that connects the axis to that rectangle. You have to figure out how long that is. How long that is is the radius. How tall that rectangle is is the height. So this is a straightforward one as far as the setup is at least. Because we have the y-axis as our axis of rotation. This is from the formula that we derived. The radius is just x and the height is just the distance up to the function the formula is just that you're to take 2 pi times the integral from some a to b and whatever you got for that radius just multiply it times the height. And that's very convenient here because the x that's in the denominator for the height will cancel with the x that's for the radius. You see that? This is meant to be, if you know how to set it up, then that's almost all the problem here. What's the a and the b? The start and the end of the whole thing. Pi over 2 and pi. The integration is meant to be some non-factor, hopefully. 
What is the antiderivative of sine x? Negative cosine. We did that earlier. Yep. Negative cosine. So we have pi over 2 to pi with the 2 pi out here. Antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. So we're going to have this, this, this negative 2 pi. And we're going to have the cosine of pi minus the cosine of pi over 2. pull all that junk outside and just plug in for x. Cosine of pi <coughs> is negative 1. The cosine of pi over 2? 0. The answer to this question is 2 pi. So if you know how to set it up, the integration is just secondary. It's not, mu it's not much at all. It's all in the setup. And this is the general setup, the, the one we derived. Because it was the y-axis, questions? Hi, what's your name? Uh, Angela. Angela. I still don't really understand like, why in this case the radius would be x and the previous case it was pi over 2 minus x. Um, it's because the axis is the y-axis. When your axis is the y-axis, this, this distance here is the distance off the y-axis. And what we're saying is that that is always just called x. We didn't have that on the last one, though. The axis moved to be something else. When the axis moves away from x or y, there's always some adding or subtracting that must happen. And that's why that one ended up as, uh, what was it, pi over 2 take away x. Good question. Yeah? All right, great. More questions? Yes? Isn't there a gap between the pi over 2 and the y axis? Yes. So why is there no adding or subtracting? It's because th th that gap will be taken into account because we don't start at 0. This thing, st the, the lower limit of integration is pi over 2. Okay. Our region definitely is removed away from the axis. Yeah. But we're going we're gonna to make our thing start at pi over 2. So how could, how could we radius? When we start, the radius is pi over 2. When we're done, the radius is pi. Yeah. And so the point is that it is the distance off of this x-axis. It is this distance off of the y-axis. Don't, don't let this gap be a problem for you. When you draw your typical rectangle, you draw a line that connects your axis to your rectangle. And you have to figure out how long that line is, and that's your radius. I might have added this too. Wow, I don't, I don't know. This is not on the skeleton notes? I don't think so. I'm sorry. That's okay, look. All right, so we're going to work these. And then uh, this is from the textbook, question number 26, 27. I'm sorry. Okay, it's one of those, let me change the axis all around. Still, can you figure out the problem questions? Don't worry about the graph. I'll give it to you. Who knows what that thing is supposed to look like? 12 times the quantity of, of y squared minus y cubed. So I'll, I have a good grasp. I'll know what you should be able to graph. And that's not something you should be able to graph. 
I'll give you that graph. Okay. And right now we're just interested in the setup. First up is our axis is going to be um, the x-axis. We're going to rotate about the x-axis. You see why we don't want to use washer in this? If we were to use washer, we would draw this rectangle perpendicular to our axis. And what variable will it be in? This thing gets moved horizontally. It's going to be an X. My disk, my disk, my disk is going to be, my washer is going to be an X. Why is that bad? Well, look at the function. X equals, let me just illuminate it. This function is X equals 12 times Y squared minus, you're not going to be able to solve that for Y to flip it and have this thing be in terms of X? Washers out. Okay, great. Washers out. Don't draw that perpendicular. Draw that rectangle parallel. All right, we haven't done one of these sideways, but so what? We can do it now, though. After you draw the rectangle parallel to the axis, Draw a line that connects it to the axis. The distance of the line is the radius. How tall the rectangle is? The height. What's the radius? Y. Y. It is the distance off the x-axis. Y. In this particular instant. What's the height? How tall is that rectangle? How tall is that rectangle? The function. It's an x distance, the distance off of the y axis. It's x. And, and, and we have to write it in terms of y. And so it is 12 times the quantity y minus y cubed, y squared minus y cubed. Okay, and then we'll set it up with shell. So we're doing it in shells. It might not be that we do all these in shells, but that one's definitely in shells. I think it's going to be that these are all in shells. I think it's all the same function. So, so yeah. Questions about A before we move to B? Yes, hi. What's your name? I forgot. Yeah. Mikhail. Mikhail. What are the limits of integration? To picture limits, you have to picture the rectangle moving. The rectangle moves from some low point to some high point. And it's your job to be able to figure out what those are. Um, and so in this case, uh, the low point is 0, and the high point is 1. Let's move on to B. Now make your axis y equals 1. All right, so still doing shells. We're still doing a rectangle that is parallel to my axis. I'm still supposed to draw a line that connects my axis to that rectangle. The height's going to be the same. You might as well just take that mystery out. The height's going to be the same. The difference is now I have a, a different radius. 
How long is that line? It's removed away from the x-axis. How long is that line? How long is this? For how long is this? What's being taken away from that? The function. Y, in this case. The distance off the x-axis. So what's the radius? 1 minus y. Yeah? Questions? When your axis is removed away from the y or x, it's going to be some kind of adding or subtracting that has to happen. I'm just thinking because there's like a gap on either side of the function. So, can you just explain it? I don't have like a specific. This thing moves. You have to visualize it. It's going to move. There's no gap in the beginning. The thing starts off down here, and then I move upward. Yes, there's a gap. When you, by this time, yes, there's this gap here. But still, this distance that I have to subtract off, it still is the distance off the x-axis. Regardless of that gap. Who cares? Yes, there's a gap. Yeah, yeah. You're right. There's a gap. But what am I supposed to subtract off? this distance and it's represented by how far you are away from the x-axis and that's called y okay this thing moves up and down yes there's a gap just gaps don't matter anymore there's almost always a gap with shell so which way does the shape go the shell is sideways <laughs> this thing rotates and here's the shell Before our shells were up, you know, standard shells. Now the shells are sideways shells. The rectangle makes the shell. I never had the rectangle making the washer, but the rectangle makes the washer. The rectangle makes the disc. The rectangle is everything. It's the rectangle that gets rotated to make the shape. Well, not my, my radius is the my, 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 Sorry, I'm over here. My, my axis is here. Why am I rotating down there for it? Sorry about that. That was terrible. But you got the point though, right? <laughs> Sorry. That is not the shell. Sorry about that. The shell is up here. That's so terrible, that drawing. I'm sorry. Okay, next question. All right, all right, change it again. Same process. See, I want to take away process. That's why I keep throwing all these extra problems. It's the process I want you to walk away with. I don't care where this thing moves. I don't want you to get stuck on it. Well, it's always going to be this. I change it, it's not that. Now I have y equals 8 fifths. I don't know what it is. I just know it's more than one. So here's a dotted line, something more than one. Call it 8 fifths. Draw the axis. Draw the rectangle. Draw the line that connects the axis to the rectangle. Height, no mystery. Same height. The mystery comes in what the radius is. The radius is represented by that distance that connects the axis to the
rectangle. It's removed away from the x-axis. It must be some adding or subtracting that takes place. There's some solid distance, and there's something that needs to be subtracted. So the radius is? Eight over five minus y. I don't know what this is, like why this is here. I guess I can't even erase it. Anyway, yeah. Questions? Why, why, why? Questions? Yes? Um, it, it kind of goes back to this question. Do you not worry about the gap between y equals 8 fifths and natural curve? Because the natural curve is going to be the same with the cylinder is about that axis. Like you don't have to account for that. Yeah, shells, shells doesn't matter about gaps. There's almost always going to be a gap. It doesn't play a role though. For washer, the gap plays a role, but for shell, there's going to be a gap. So. In general, you can get by without worrying about it. The radius is the distance from the axis of rotation, and you'll have to use the x-axis distance here to figure it out. You take the 8 fifths and you subtract off this. It's not about this gap here. This doesn't mean anything. It's about this this distance, this rectangle is off the x-axis, which is called y. Okay, last, last, last. Move it down here now to somewhere called negative two-fifths. Same old rectangle, same old height. What in the world is the radius? Chris. Chris. Good job, good job. Is this distance here plus this distance here? That's how long it is. The first distance is a constant. Positive two fifths. I know this says negative, but you know, distance being positive. Two fifths. You add something to it. What's this distance? It's the distance off of the x axis. I'm trying to hammer home the point. So we add on y. Good job, Chris. All right, great. Not that we couldn't solve any of those, but uh, anyway, let me uh, show you. You have to visualize this. So I hope it's still active. Um, so first, let's do some a serious thing here. Let's do, look at look at the this whole. I don't know if this is still an active web page. I hope and pray it is. Um, it really it shows the animation. It's really nice. It shows the things moving for you that I can't show you. Um, let's see. I'm hoping this works. I don't know what this is. GCSU. I don't know. No, I'm not in luck here. <coughs> oh. Darn. No. Mm -hmm. My internet connection. Wow. Crazy, huh? It's not there, huh? Oh, man. That's not good. All right. Uh, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine.
this is the website I want it. All right, so this, this is easy, like um, I don't know what's this called. Um, you know the the pretzel snack combo. If you take out the the inside, it's a slice of a shell. That's what this is there. And then here's the visualization of it. What's happening? A rectangle is creating this shell. The rectangle rotates around and creates the shell. The shells are nested, one inside the other. What you're seeing is only half of it as they rotate around. And that makes the volume. If you're more accurate, you make less, I mean, you make, you make the size between them smaller and smaller, and you get exactness. So there's these nested shells, um, and he just has different animations here, stuff that I can't do by hand. Here's a sideways one. Rotate them, you get a, get a shell. And, and you know, the, the shell here has a hole, but the other part doesn't. So, you're right, right? That's what they're saying. <laughs> so they, 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 take, they take the region, they chop it up, and then they take and rotate these things, and that's how we're getting the volume. Anyway, it's stuff that I can't draw by hand. And that's that one from before. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Combos. Uh, what's that? Um, oh, uh, paper towel. Unroll it. You get two pi r times the height. That's the vault. That's the that's the area there. And then there's the thickness dx. That's from our derivation of our formula. They got, they're doing the same thing we're doing, right? Okay. All right. Now for the the better. Uh, I hope this works. That was a long time ago, I know, 2008, <laughs> but uh, it's pretty neat. Um, I hope it still comes up. Oh wait, I want it to be, uh, I want you to hear, hear the music. It was when she was, it was Disturbia, but, but anyway, uh, uh, what am I trying to do here? Switch to PC, go home. <coughs> Okay, maybe not. And go here to and it was what? Re She comes out in that cylindrical shell shape. And it opens up for you so you can see the inside, the nested shell. 